Well, good evening. Welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. I hope you're doing well. And if you're new to us, if this is the first Wednesday night class you've uh, tapped into for a little while, I really suggest that you go back uh, several weeks and pick up the beginning of this study. Because we're, we're looking at uh, answering one line of thinking when it comes to truth. A question was asked by Pilate to Jesus, what is truth? And that's a question that's being asked by so many people, and it should be. We should be people saying, okay, what's the truth? We should be truth seekers. And the beautiful thing is, is that we know that we can find the truth. God says so. He promises that. And so, out of all the different areas of truth that we should be pursuing after, like, is the Bible the Word of God? Can we trust that what is written in our English Bible is reliable and it's what God originally said? These things should be studied out, absolutely. Is God the Creator? Is, is, is that the truth? Those things should be studied out. Is Jesus who He says He is? Has He been raised from the dead? Can we prove that He's been raised from the dead? Those things need to be studied out. Those truths do. <clears throat> but what we're doing right now is we're just simply looking to the scripture, the book of John, at least right now, to answer the question that Pilate had of Jesus. What is truth? And we're going to see how, and we have noticed how in John chapter 1, that it shows that Jesus is the truth revealed from God. And that the truth revealed of God, Jesus Christ, then teaches how important it is for us to know and follow the truth. When it comes to worship, when it comes to plan of salvation, when it comes to knowing who Jesus is, we need to pursue the truth to find the answers that will lead us to life everlasting. And without the truth, the truth. You and I will not make it to heaven, nor will anybody else. We've also noticed that Jesus Christ, the truth, compels us, calls us, commands us to speak the truth to others, to take his word out, his living word, so that they can be set free. And as I've said many times before, it's not just taking out the doctrinal things. It's first teaching them the truth about who Jesus is. And then what he calls us to do and be. And how we've been separated from him because of sin. How he brings us back together again with God. By knowing him, loving him, submitting to him, and following the commands of his truth. We will not make it to heaven without submitting to and knowing what he says and who he is. So we're pursuing these things in the scripture. Answering the question, what is truth? And we've hit this section now. In John 14 through 17, where Jesus is speaking to his apostles, and, and as I've said before, this is an extremely important transitional section of Scripture, where it sets up the context of so many things in the future. And we've noticed how this, this time in history that we're looking at is the time where we see God's plan of how the Father on the throne gives his word to the Son, how the Son is going to give it to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to then bring it down to the apostles in an amazing, powerful way to give them the ability to know the fullness of God's word and then to have the ability and power to preach and teach and verify the word being spoken by powers and miracles so the world has a chance to witness the truth being spoken verified by the power of God and the Holy Spirit. And we can know then the truth is being spoken by them because of what we see here in John 14 through 17. So we've already studied that out, John 14, 15, and 16. We finished 16 last, last Wednesday. Now we're going to pick it up in verse 17 where Jesus, he pulls it all together through prayer. Ooh, what a lesson that is. Pulling it all together through prayer. Because Jesus wants us 
to have access to the truth and then choose for ourselves whether we want to follow him and what he says or not. Now, Jesus pulls it together in prayer. Verse 1 of, of John 17. These things Jesus spoke, and lifting up his eyes to heaven, he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you, even as you gave him authority over all mankind to all whom you have given him he may give eternal life. And this is eternal life, that they may know you. How do we know God? It's through the truth revealed. It's the only way to really know him. It isn't some existential experience. It isn't just getting brief conversation. Oh yeah, God exists. Our Lord sets up a system where we can know him. But we have to pursue it. And it's been revealed. Watch this. That they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorify you on the earth, having accomplished the work which you have sent and given to me. And now, Glorify you, me, together with yourself, Father, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. I manifest your name to the men whom you gave me out of the world. Thine they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word now. Now they have come to know, again, there it is, your word, know, knowledge, truth. They know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words which you gave me, I've given to them. And they received them and truly understood that I came forth from you. And they believed that you did send me. I ask on their behalf. I do not ask on behalf of the world, but of those who you have given me, for they are yours. And all things that are mine are yours, and yours are mine. And I have been glorified in them, and I am now no more in this world. And yet they themselves are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, keep them in, in your name the name which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. While I was with them, I was keeping them from, I was keeping them in your name, which you gave me. I guarded them, and not one of them perished out of the, but the son of perdition, he's speaking of Judas, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy made full in themselves. He's speaking of the apostles. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. I do not ask you to take them out of the world, but to keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I'm not of the world. Sanctify them in truth. Your word is truth. Are you grasping what Jesus is praying for? <clears throat> you can imagine. After all Christ has gone through, and now it comes down to the moment, the moment where he is releasing the apostles into the hands of God, where he's releasing the apostles into the beginning part of their ministry. 
in this transitional part where, where Jesus now knows that he has done his work, he's shared his truth, he's given the word of God, the truth to these apostles, and he's praying that God, please set them aside in your truth. Let them stay within your truth. The world needs to see the difference between the truth of who God is, who Jesus is, what the word of God stands for, and then what the world says. Father, set them apart in a way that the world sees me through the truth. And so Jesus is praying for the apostles to pick up the mantle of truth and live by it. Now notice what he says. Verse 18. As you did send me into the world, I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they themselves also be sanctified in truth. I do not ask in behalf of these alone, but for those also who believe in me through their word. And their word is what? The truth. That they may all be one, even as you, Father, are one in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, that the world may believe that you did Send me. Did you just hear that Jesus prayed for you and I? And he prayed for us to be connected very directly with the word that he's given to the apostles and that the apostles then give to us and the book that's written out, the book of truth, God's word is truth. And Jesus is praying for us to be one with him and one with one another and united through the truth. It's the only way. How do we get and navigate through all the differences through the truth? How do we bring people from different cultures and different languages and, and different religious backgrounds all into being one? It's the one truth. It's the only way to accomplish. How do we settle things between husbands and wives that are in disagreements? Or how do we settle things between parents and children? How do we settle things between brothers and sisters in Christ? How do we settle things in our community? How do we settle things in society? How do we bring people together as one? The only way is through people submitting to following the one truth of Jesus Christ. It's the only way. And brothers and sisters, let's be an answer to the prayer of Christ. Let us be one with him. Let's set aside opinions. Let's set aside feelings. Let's set aside personalized perspective. And let's get back to seeing things the way Jesus sees things. It doesn't mean that we can't be individuals and have our own quirks and personalities and, and our own stuff. That doesn't mean that. But we can be one and still be us. We can still be one and still have our uniqueness about ourselves. We're still one and have our unique strengths about ourselves. But he calls us to be one. And to do that, that means that, as he said way back in the near the, the middle of our study in in this section of scripture, we have to be willing to be pruned. That our branch of life needs to be pruned so that we can add then ourselves into the lives of Jesus and our brothers and sisters in Christ. So let's be the answer to the prayer of Christ and be one. And not only that, but then take out his one word to the world. So the world sees what Jesus looks like, the truth of what Jesus looks like. Okay, now, having gotten to this point in our study, and I know that it's disconnected because we're, we're doing these 20, 22-minute lessons, and then it's off and then off to the next. So you're going to have to do your due diligence. You're going to have to follow along, and that's why I, I repeat things along the way, hoping that you'll... You'll, you'll get this into your mind to see the flow of what we've done from John chapter 1 all the way to John chapter 17, answering the question from John 18, what is truth? 
Because our, our, our line of thinking is, is to see that Jesus Christ has revealed the truth and he's revealed it in such a way that we now have access to it today. And now we see in John 17 that the prayer of Jesus is for mankind to be one with him through the truth. Simply submitting to what he says, pursuing who he is and what he says. Now, let's further our study a little bit before we get to the end of our time tonight. By looking to 2 Peter chapter 1. <clears throat> 2 Peter chapter 1. Let's look to verse 19. 2 Peter 1, 19. And so we have the prophetic word made more sure, to which you do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in the dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star arises in your hearts. But know this, first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will, but men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. I'm going to remind you of something that we looked at and talked about last week and how we're tying together what Jesus does with the apostles in that middle section of John and how it sets the tone for then the Holy Spirit coming to the apostles in Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 2 and how Peter preaches the first gospel message, the keys to the kingdom, the truth. And then from that moment on, the apostles then led by the Holy Spirit prophesied and spoke and wrote so that we could have the prophetic word of God, the truth, here. And I want us to make sure that we pay very close attention that as the truth has been revealed to us now, in this manner, that it is not up for our own whims and interpretation. That we are simply to allow the context of how God lays out his truth for us to simply seek and follow and not make our own interpretations up. And this is where mankind has messed up big time. Because people feel as if they have the freedom to interpret it. Well, let's interpret it based upon cultural things. Let's interpret it based upon... Um, you know, feeling things. Let's interpret it based upon, you know, whatever this, this, this man-made thread of religious approach, how he sees things. No. God says it and he means it. And yes, there are very difficult passages and concepts to, to get through and understand. There's no doubt there are some very challenging things to discuss and to continue to search and research through. But I'll say it again, the fundamental principles of who we are, who Jesus is, how to follow him, what his plan of salvation is, how, um, how to recognize the separation between us and God because of sin. The, the simplicity of submitting to and just saying, yes, Lord, your will be done. And the hunger to thirst and hunger after his word of truth. The interpretation and simplicity of those things is here. What baptism is all about. How to be born again. The structure of marriage. The structure of worship. Not complicated. They really are. <clears throat> simply laid out by God's spoken word without the need for us to interpret anything from our perspective. 
not, in, not adding to, but simply following his word. So important for us to see that. And contextually, as long as we look at things chronological and contextual, God really does lay it out for us. Now, some of you are thinking, yeah, Ted, there are so many people that I know and they've used scriptures. They've pointed at scriptures to point out the, the sinner's prayer or infant baptism or you know, they, they point out certain verses to, to talk about worship service and, and, and the role of women. Yeah, I know they do. I've been there, discussed this many times with people. And I promise this to you. The people have to take scripture out of context to make those theologies realities. They do. They have to pull things out like cafeteria form, going through a line and going, hey, I'll have a little bit of this verse. I'll have a little bit of this verse. This is the concept I'm, I'm pursuing, so I'm going to add this to it. And before you know it, you see, here's the meal. But they have to do it cafeteria style, picking and choosing. Instead of being served the meal by God, and allowing him to lay out the courses before us. And when you do that, the scriptures line up beautifully and perfectly to show the answers to those things for us to know Jesus. And so, we'll close out here. We have more to talk about next time, of course, within this line of what is truth. Well, let's close with a prayer. Father, we thank you for giving us once again this challenge um, to be truth seekers. And Father, may we be. And may we help others who are seeking your truth. May we have a ready answer for them. And may we be challenged by the fact that in today's world, we are the ones who are called up to take up the mantle of truth and not be afraid so, Father, let us and help us and lead us to find your context, to find your interpretations of your word, and then let us be able to, to speak those things freely to the people that we love because we, too, want men to be saved. We love you, and we thank you for this opportunity to study. It's through Christ we pray. Amen. You guys have a blessed night.